He's clearly telling the churches in Galatia that my main concern, my ministry, my job, my work is to preach the true, real gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And he's not there to get attention or likes or followers from people. But instead, he wants to appoint it to the one who needs to be praised, our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Sometimes, or let's say a lot of times, our goal is for people to like us. And that's why we say the truth very softly or we just agree with all what other people say rather than exposing the truth, rather than helping them to understand the gospel. But because we want to make everyone happy, we start disobeying the word of God. But it's definitely not about making every single person comfortable and happy. But do what God wants you to do. What you're called for. No matter who feels bad, no matter who feels good, in a loving way, we have to show the love like Christ. We have to preach the word of God, the gospel, in a correct way because Paul talks about dividing the word correctly. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. Paul is referring to his conversion. He had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus that changed his life from being Saul, the persecutor of Christians, to the person who is now proclaiming the gospel to the Gentiles. We see that in the book of Acts chapter 9. His conversion happened over there. And he's telling people that, see, whatever I'm preaching to you or I'm teaching you, it's not directly from any human resource or my own feelings or anything. It directly came from Christ. And he's been given authority to preach the good news. Amen. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 13. Paul is the one who was also called Saul at that time when he was persecuting the Christians. Paul actually killed those people who were Christians who believed in Christ. But after his conversion, after him having the life meeting with our Lord on the road to Damascus, he was changed. He became a new creation in Christ and the Holy Spirit took over. The Holy Spirit was leading him to preach the good news to the Gentiles. And from that, we also learn that no matter what our past is, no matter what we have done in the past, or whatever sins we have committed now, God is still, is still looking for us to go to Him, to worship Him, to praise Him, to put Him first, because He's our Creator. He's a forgiving and merciful God. But also remember, there's a time when the Bible, the Word of God, talks about the judgment and anger of God. This is the period of grace, so God is openly inviting and the Holy Spirit, the Restrainer, is still here helping us out so that nobody should perish, everybody should come to know the truth and they will be saved in the name of our Lord Jesus. There's a time coming when the judgment is going to happen, the wrath of God, hell and heaven, all these things are going to happen. It's intense. So God doesn't want anybody to perish. That's why he's using his people. And at that time, he used those disciples, those prophets and uh, the apostles. And now he's using us, as the book of Hosea says, that in the last days, your daughters and your sons will prophesy. So we are chosen to do the good works for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. But these works are not our own feelings works. Not only by reading the Bible every day, going to the church or praying to the rosary, which is not even biblical. All these things are works. Worshipping the idols or images. All these are man-made religion or religious works. Our main concern is to put faith in him who did the great work of dying on the cross. Being buried, resurrected and his soon coming king for us. Believe. The word of God clearly says that believe and you will be saved for what God has done. That doesn't mean that you only believe and you start living your life the way you want. But if you truly believe in what God has done for you, what Christ has done for you, then the Holy Spirit resides in you. And even if you sin, you will, because we're humans, will fall. But the Holy Spirit will convict us, will guide us. Because this is the character of God. He leaves us with everything that He can to make sure that we are aligning in His Word and with Him. Amen? His grace, His mercy, His love, His Holy Spirit who guides and comforts us in every situation.
And naturally, that's the byproduct. Naturally, we will want to do good works. It will come automatically because that's the fruit of the Spirit, which is in us. So we can do nothing through which we'll earn salvation on our own. But it is because of what Christ has done and we put the faith, we put our faith in what He has done, not what we can do or what we have done. Because there is nothing in this world you and I can do to be saved. But just to put our faith in Him who has done it all for us. He who didn't even know what sin is and He became sin for us. Galatians chapter 1 verse 14. This is very important to understand because this is what exactly the Galatians were trying to adopt. Trying to go back to the old ways of following the law. They were thinking following the moral law, Ten Commandments is the reason or is one of the ways how you earn your salvation. But Paul said that no, what I preach to you, it's not about law. I preach to you the grace gospel, the grace of our Lord Jesus, what he has done. Amen. And the law is good. We read that in the book of Romans. The law was created by God for us to know what is right and what is wrong. Because if the ten moral commandments weren't created or weren't given to us, or to Moses, then how would we know that stealing is wrong, killing is wrong? But still, at that time, those people could not keep the commandments. And even us, we cannot keep all commandments. If you keep one commandment, you have to keep all of it. And we know that will fall short. That's why our Lord and our Savior came and died on the cross for us and took away our sins. And now what we have to do is to put our faith in His work. Faith in what He has done for us, not what we are doing or what we have done. Amen. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. He says that he who set me apart before I was in my mother's womb. This is Paul. He was 30 years old when he was converted. And before that, he lived his life persecuting Christians. But even that, God knew his plans even beforehand. Even before Paul was born, God knew that he was planning to use Paul. He is going to reveal his son Jesus to Paul and he is going to use Paul to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen. So the biggest lesson we can learn from here is that the same thing is true for all of us today. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he prepared in advance, not the works which I do or you do. That we should work in that. Before we were even born, God knew us exactly what, we, what our purpose is going to be, regardless of our messy lives, our messy sins, our rebellion in our lives. God still knew us in our darkest times. He was always with us and he's always with us, even in our happiness and sadness, because he's God. And that was his plan of redemption for us and for him, for his glory and kingdom. And also after Paul's conversion, Paul did not go to Jerusalem or to other apostles. He took time to abide in Christ and to grow in the knowledge of God. And he also listened to the Holy Spirit and leading him instead. And then he came back to Damascus. So this time period, we also see that we need to abide in Christ. When Paul was saved, on that day on the road of Damascus. He didn't directly go back to Jerusalem and start preaching. He stayed there for a while and he prayed about it. He grew in the knowledge of God. He was being led by the Holy Spirit. So this also shows us how important it is also for us before we teach, preach or share the word for us ourselves to understand and abide in Christ and ask what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Amen. In the same manner, also Jesus started his public ministry until he was 30. There were times where our Lord Jesus also spent time alone praying. He took his own time until he was completely ready to go further to do anything else. So the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 18. After three years, he, Paul went to Jerusalem to get to know Cephas, who is Peter, and remained with him for 15 days. And that's amazing because we get to see that how Paul and Peter gathered together. They shared the word of God, the stories of Christ. Peter walked with Christ. On the other hand, uh, Paul, who was a persecutor, became a new creation in Christ. And have had this great conversation and great time with each other, sharing how our Lord worked in their life. And Galatians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. 
he's clearly saying that he wasn't anywhere else out of the churches but he also met James the brother of our Lord and that's it it was like a time of unknown Galatians chapter 1 verse 23 to 24 that must have been like these people knew the, that Paul, who was a persecutor, heard his stories of him. They heard stories of Paul killing, persecuting God's people, destroying church. And then they heard of this amazing conversion that he was now being used to proclaim the gospel of our Lord. And that is incredible. And there are so many stories out there, even now, how God removes us from those dark moments and dark life into his marvelous light. He knew me before I even knew him or anything because the word of God clearly says that. He knew he needed us in our mother's womb and he knew us before we were even born. Amen. This was an intense study. It was just chapter one of the book of Galatians, but it has a lot of meat in it, a lot of solid food, a lot of things which we need to pray about and we need to look at it. I'm thankful to the Lord for giving us this platform where we can share the word of God and listen to each other, interact with each other online and come to know the truth which sets us free. Amen. Overall guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this kind of uh, videos that's related to the Bible study. If you have a request for me to make any other video related to any uh, topic from the Bible or any books of the Bible, then leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to do the Bible study for that specific uh, topic or book from the bible i will see you all in my next video until then you guys take care god bless you all and stay rooted in christ bye